I'm going to tell you a secret about myself you didn't know before today. Here it is. I don't wash my hands after I use the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. I know. I wash my hand. I wash my hand. <gasps> Are you kidding me right now? I know. You see, I tell jokes to disarm the situation. <laughs> oh, knee slapper. For our first deployment, I went overseas for 15 months. While I'm over there, I meet my medic, who's a good friend of mine, and, and we're hanging out. Well, this MySpace friend request pops up, and there's the picture right there. I don't know that lady, so I go hit the client, because I'm like, that's a dating site, no way. When, you know what? Same last name as my medic. He didn't tell me about no cousin that he had looks like that. <laughs> He didn't have a cousin that looks like that. That's his little sister. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she thinks I'm pretty cute. <laughs> Can't blame her. So I hit accept and start chit chatting with this girl online, right? And I don't know much about her. I'm 20, she's 18. Well, we decide we should hang out. Never met her before. So what are you supposed to do? I fly into Dallas to pick her up. Well, the next morning we're saying her goodbye. In between her sobs, she says, I love you, you know? And I'm not an idiot, you know? I'm not a Marine. I'm like, hey. <laughs> You know, hey, I love you too. We got married. Then we got an apartment at Fort Bragg, got a dog. I had another deployment, I went overseas for a year this time. Came back, four months later, my wife and I found out we were gonna have a baby, which is exciting, you know, because a lot of guys came back four months later, their wife had a baby, and they're like, yeah. Yeah, and they're like, oh my gosh, it's a miracle. And you're like, it's not. It's not. Like, he's just, he's just premature. <laughs> that baby's 12 pounds, you know what I mean? So, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. My wife and I had the baby. So my wife knew there was a brotherhood, there was a calling, so I'm like, I have to go overseas. Guys that come from across this great nation that believe in me, serve under me, and I decided that I'm gonna go. Well, a month and a half in, we get a phone call from the village elder. He says, hey, we got some roadside bombs in the village, you guys can check them out. So we do that, we go out, and we went over the ground not once but twice. Nothing underneath it alarmed us. So I took my backpack, about 125 pounds, off my shoulder and I go to set it on the ground. When I, the bag hits the ground though, you see underneath it was a bomb. And when the bomb went off, I took my right arm, right leg off automatically. I get thrown left side of my face, right? I roll over my back, I see the aftermath of what's happened. And in my head, I keep replaying the movie, Saving Private Ryan. When the medic gets shot in the stomach, he yells for his mom in fear. And then he ultimately dies. And I keep telling myself, do not freak out. So in my head, I'm telling the medic, hey, it's fine, whatever happens, happens. Tourniquets got on me, get me on a helicopter to the hospital. And as they're wheeling me through the hospital, I'm still conscious and coherent and awake. And the nurses, I keep trying to sit up, and they keep pushing me down. I say, quit touching me, I'm fine, leave me alone. And they say, look, Sergeant Mills, I don't know how you're still awake right now, but you need to go to sleep. And they knock me out. The last thing I say to the nurse when I look over at her is my little girl, am I ever gonna see her again? Because she was six months old at the time. So they knocked me out, pushed me in, 14 hours of surgery, nine doctors and seven nurses work on me. Two nurses for nine hours pump air in and out of my lungs. And on April 14th of 2012, they woke me up for the very first time. When I came to, only person in the room was my brother-in-law. And I looked over at Josh and I said, am I paralyzed? He said, no. I looked at him again, I said, Josh, I can't feel my fingers and toes, so tell me the truth, am I paralyzed? He said, man, you're not paralyzed, but you ain't got him anymore. Immediately in my head, I was embarrassed, ashamed that I got hit. How can I be a, you know, a father and a husband? And the biggest thing that went through my head was, why didn't I just die? How is this better than me just dying? I didn't want to talk to my parents. I did not want to talk to my wife and face reality. Finally, Josh says, look, man, I can only imagine what you're going through, but you got to call your wife and your parents. So I called my wife. She answered and said, hey, what's up? I'm fine, love you, bye. So I don't want to have this conversation. I call my... Uh, Mom and Dad, before I could get the phone hung up, my mom yells, hey, Travis, happy birthday, by the way, because that day was my 25th birthday. Three days later, I arrived at Walter Reed. My wife came up to me as they're pushing me in on the stretcher. And I looked over and I said, hey, Kels, you don't got to do this. Whatever we have in the account's yours. The house is yours. And financially, whatever I can do to help you and Chloe for the rest of your life, I will do that. But take everything we have and go. This isn't what I would choose for you. And she said, you know, I've thought about that but handicap parking. Oh, I want it. I want it. Yeah. So she, so she stayed. So she stayed. Now, she said, that's not how this works. We're going to get through this together. And when my daughter's in there looking at me, I think she's going to think her dad's a monster. I mean, look at me. And all of a sudden, she starts to laugh and giggle. And it dawns on me. 
I look like every single toy she's ever been given. <laughs> ah. Short arm, short legs, fuzzy chest. <laughs> I'm a teddy bear. <laughs> but for these two, I'm gonna get better. So I started my recovery. The first thing I had to do is start setting some real goals. So the first thing I wanna do is be able to feed myself. After that, you know what? It was time for me to start walking again. I knew it could be done. I had to get going and start walking. So seven weeks and four days, just shy of two months, I took my very first steps at Walter Reed. It was very painful. When I got my legs on, they said you might walk one lap at the Military Advanced Training Center, which is about as big as a gymnasium. So I walked three laps that day just to prove I could. So I also had a goal. On my birthday, when I woke up, I was able to drive six and a half hours home to North Carolina so I could see my men. Me hugging Daniel Bateson, the medic that actually saved my life. I never dwell on the past. I used to always wonder, what if I didn't step there? How can I go back in time? I'd close my eyes and I'd wish and I'd pray for it not to happen, but it's not the case. So instead of dwelling on the past, I reminisce the past. I had 25 great years. I've had six wonderful years since. You can't always control your situation. But every day, I wake up thankful that I'm still here with my family. I still take my daughter gymnastics. I still enjoy time with my wife. I'm still able to do things. I realize life's going to be forever changing. There's always going to be something that you have planned out, and all of a sudden you have to have a new direction. Embrace that change, and no matter what's scary or seems impossible, always push through because it's going to get better if you make it that way.